Hello friends and welcome back to our kitchen. So for today's video, I'm making three very simple, very easy fall treats, I guess is what I'm gonna call it. I wasn't sure whether to call this video fall treats, fall food, fall appetizers. Fall delights. Fall delights, whatever it is, I'm just telling you these recipes are gonna be so good. They are going to be the easiest things to make and you can have them whenever you want, it doesn't matter. Breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Exactly. Dessert. Yes. Midnight snack. Yes. So let's get started. Lucky. It's beautiful. Oh my. <laughs> I love it. Safety first, people. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, first things first. <laughs> first things first, mm -hmm. we gotta cut up our butternut squash. <clears throat> now, I'm kind of intimidated by this because, I'm kind of intimidated because, honestly, I've never cut butternut squash. And the last time we tried to cut a, was it spaghetti squash? Uh huh. It was a little difficult, so I'm a little, gonna. A little hard. Okay, either this knife is really sharp it's not okay i'm either stronger than i was before this knife is really sharp or this is not as firm of a gourd yes i think it's not as firm so we gotta scoop these seeds out and then we're gonna cut our butternut squash into just like tiny little cubes that is how you do it b oh oh this is great hot diggity It's beautiful. <laughs> oh <my gosh. laughs> I'm in the Halloween spirit. You're... <laughs> oh, yeah. Literally perfect little squares. I wouldn't expect anything less from you. Yeah, huh? That's perfect. I can't tell if this is like blocks of cheese or butternut squash. I know, it actually looks like cheese. Yeah. Okay, listen, we just need this one and that'll be good. And then we're gonna actually cut the rest of this up and um, put it in a little freezer bag and then freeze it. And then we're gonna make butternut squash soup out of this eventually. All right, so now that we have our butternut squash all cubed up, we're just taking an apple and slicing it, and then we're gonna cut these into little bite-sized pieces as well. Now, I realize I never told y'all what we're actually making, but it's like bread with ricotta, and then we're gonna roast these apples and butternut squash and like some spices. We're gonna add some garlic, olive oil. Like it's going to be so good, like very savory, but a little bit sweet. It's gonna be delicious. Okay, so to our apples and squash, I'm gonna add a little bit of olive oil to them, some salt and pepper, then we're gonna add some cinnamon, some nutmeg, a little bit of allspice. This recipe actually also called for clove, which we don't have, so I'm just leaving that out. And then later in the recipe, it calls for fresh sage. Um, our grocery store did not have any, so since I have this, I'm just gonna go ahead and add the sage flavor to this mixture and it'll be all good. And then we'll just kind of toss that together, put it on our baking sheet, and then we're gonna roast this in the oven at like 425 for 10 to 15 minutes. Okay, so while that's in the oven, I'm gonna go ahead and take my bread and just slice it into kind of thick slices. We're gonna brush it with a little bit of olive oil and then toast this in the oven. That's some good looking bread. Save, save us, hang on, no, 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 I want that piece just to eat. The whole hunk. The whole hunk. 
This is, you know, I don't want that. Thank you. Do you know what would be so good on this bread? I'm about to do it. Check this out. Okay. Didn't work again. Okay. What would be spinach artichoke dip? No. I'm gonna heat this up. Mm. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna put some honey butter on there. Oh my goodness, it's gonna mm. be good. This is, uh, what kind of bread is this? Gosh, it this, smells so good. It smells like a. Is this a French baguette, I think, right? It says large French bread. Mm -hmm. This looks like some good uh, French toast making bread right here. <laughs> yes, and this is like the perfect um, like thickness of bread that you're gonna want, because you want it to hold up to everything we're about to put on mm -hmm. top of it. Okay, so I just pulled the apples and squash out. I'm gonna give them kind of like a little toss and then put them all over here on this side. And I'm gonna add my bread to this other side and put it back in just for a couple of minutes until that bread gets nice and toasted. Okay, so now to my small little saute pan, I'm gonna add in just a little bit of butter and then I'm gonna go ahead and mince this garlic in and let this just kind of get a little bit fragrant. Then we're gonna take that mixture and stir it into the squash and apples. Okay, so that nice golden brown color is exactly what we're looking for. So I'm just gonna take this and literally drizzle it all over the top. Bucking, can you help a sister out? Oh, why yes. Thank you. Give us all the garlic. This smells so good, y'all. Okay, so we put the sheet pan back in the oven so we can keep it kind of warm while we make our little ricotta mixture. And for this, we're just literally gonna take ricotta and then some salt and pepper, mix it together, and then that's what we're gonna spread on top of our toasted bread that is warm. It's gonna make it nice and melty and so good. Then we'll top it with our squash and apple mixture. Then we have a secret ingredient that goes on top that literally takes it over the top. Okay, and now for the grand finale, we're gonna drizzle this with a balsamic glaze. Tell me that does not look incredible. I cannot wait to try these. Okay, first of all, I feel like this is way too pretty to eat. It is absolutely beautiful. So if you're having like a little fall get together, this would be a great little appetizer, great presentation. Your friends will be very impressed. Little did they know it was very easy to make. Hmm. It needs the balsamic, I feel like. That gives it this like punch of flavor. Yeah. But the apples, like a little bit of sweetness. Mm -hmm. And then that ricotta is so like silky. That is just delicious. It's so good. You know what I think I love the most about it? What? The warm apple. Mm-hmm. Mm, it's so good. I love some ricotta cheese though. Me too. You don't really get it in a lot of stuff, you know? So when you do, much appreciated. Mm -hmm. Okay, I will meet you guys back here in the kitchen in the morning and we're gonna make two more recipes that are so easy and I am like on pins and needles. I cannot wait to try these. You know what I just realized? What? We literally were twinning. Oh yeah, our shirts are- Our shirts are like almost the exact same color. I noticed that, but I didn't say anything. <laughs> it was not a uh, plan. Not though. planned. Popping in here to say a big thank you to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video. We got some delicious recipes this week. A pork and pepper enchiladas, white cheddar wonder burgers, and a balsamic tomato and herb chicken, which sounds so good. That's actually what we're gonna be making today. And with HelloFresh, you can absolutely fall in love with all of the fall flavors in the HelloFresh market. They have a seasonal selection of savory sides and autumn themed desserts. And 
you can always choose from their ever-growing new rotation of weekly recipes that are featuring some hearty soups, chilies, and in-season fall produce to take advantage of the season's fresh flavors. Someone recently asked me, do you really love HelloFresh as much as you say that you do? And I could not answer her fast enough to say yes, we love it genuinely so much. It is the biggest blessing on weeks whenever we are very busy. Just like this week, I had a lot of work things going on. We are prepping for another camper trip. So to be able to have everything delivered to my door, I don't have to worry about meal planning, meal prepping, going to the grocery store. It just saves me so much time and gives me such a peace of mind. HelloFresh recipes are truly delicious, which is why they have more five-star reviews than any other meal kit and they offer so many different recipes to choose from and that way it helps you break out of your recipe rut each week and something cool that I love about HelloFresh is that the packaging they use to ship your food is almost entirely made from recyclable and or already recycled content and everything's already pre-portioned so that means that there is less prep for you and less wasted food so if you want to try HelloFresh go to hellofresh.com and use code Jessica 14 to get 14 free meals plus free shipping and that's at hellofresh.com using code jessica014 to get 14 free meals plus free shipping well he wasn't down here while i was making this so i'm so excited for him to try it because i think this might be one of your favorite hellofresh meals ever it's like right up your alley it, it looks exquisite as always i do it again i do it again every time it's the best you love that one? That balsamic yeah. reduction is like... With warm tomatoes and like herbs. I feel like that just is you. Mm -hmm. This is great. Per usual. Mm -hmm. Good morning. I am back in the kitchen. Bunky is upstairs working and he actually does not know these next two recipes. So I'm so excited to surprise him and let him taste test these. This next one that we're going to make might be my favorite. It is literally only two ingredients. There is an optional third ingredient, which I'll share with you once it's done, but this could not be any more simple. And y'all, I am just telling you, like thinking about how good this is gonna taste, I cannot even. So let's get started. So we are making a two ingredient apple cobbler. All you're gonna need is one can of apple pie filling and then one can of cinnamon rolls. I'm gonna go ahead and cut these up into bite-sized pieces. Okay, so I switched out my baking dish because there was actually more cinnamon roll than I thought. So to this, I'm just gonna add in my apple pie filling and then give this a good stir. Also, I do wanna mention that this is a greased baking dish and now we're just gonna pop it in the oven at 375 for about 20 to 25 minutes. Now I'm sure y'all can guess what we're gonna do with the cinnamon roll frosting. Once that's out of the oven, we're gonna drizzle that frosting all over the top. Like, y'all, this is gonna be so good. Um, and the third ingredient that you could use also is vanilla ice cream, which why not? We're definitely gonna do that as well. Um, and this would be like a great recipe for like an easy breakfast minus the ice cream or with the ice cream, or this would be a great little dessert so fast. And I know you and your family are going to love this. I cannot wait to try it. Okay, so while that's in the oven, we're gonna go ahead and get started on this last recipe. And we are making a super easy pumpkin cheesecake dip. We're gonna eat it with some apples. Like y'all, it's gonna be so good. Bunky and I are actually going um, on a little camping trip this weekend. It was kind of like a spur of the moment thing. And I was like, this will be perfect to take with us to just have in the camper for like a fun little snack or dessert. So let me flip you around and show you these ingredients. So you're gonna need one eight ounce package of cream cheese i have two like halves here so we're just going to put those two halves together to create our whole then you're going to need one tub of cool whip you're also going to need some pumpkin pie spice we don't have any so i'm going to use a little bit of cinnamon and i may even put a little bit of apple pie spice in there who knows might get kind of crazy and then you're going to need one can of pumpkin puree and some brown sugar that is it so we're going to get everything in the bowl and then mix it up and this will be done how easy is that Okay. 
Okay, for the second time this morning, I think I may have needed a bigger bowl. Hopefully this is not gonna be too messy, otherwise I'm gonna have to transfer it. Okay, before we blend our dip, our cobbler just came out of the oven. It smells incredible. So we're gonna go ahead and just drizzle our um, cinnamon roll icing all over the top. I mean, can you even handle this goodness? My bunkie is gonna be so excited. Okay, back over here to our dip. Wish me luck that this does not go everywhere. Okay, we successfully did it with only a few little splatters. This looks so good. I'm gonna top it with a little bit more cinnamon and then a little bit of apple pie spice and then this will be ready and Bunky's gonna come taste test all this with me. You smell the wafting of goodness upstairs. I do. It just comes through the vents. Let me show you what you're about to taste test, okay? Okay. Here we have a super easy wow. pumpkin cheesecake dip. That looks very, uh, very uh, light and airy. Oh, very it's gonna fluffy. be so good. And I'm gonna like slice up some apples to eat mm -hmm. with it. And we're gonna take that on our camping trip. Perfect. Uh-huh. Come to this goodness. Oh my heavens. Right? Do you know what this is? That's what the ice cream was for. It's for the ice cream's for. This is a two ingredient apple cobbler. Really? With cinnamon rolls. That looks incredible. Oh my gosh, Funky. I'm so excited. Like, we have got to dig into this. Oh my. <laughs> I love it. Mmm. That's gonna be good. Y'all have no idea how excited we are. Mmm. Just warm, gooey apples. Oh my goodness. That's delicious. Y'all, this might be one of the greatest little recipe, dessert, appetizer, breakfast, however you want to eat it, ever. Two ingredients. What's the dough stuff made of? Is that biscuits or crescent rolls? Crescent rolls. Mm. Cinnamon rolls. That's what that is. Yes. Oh my gosh. So this is cinnamon rolls and apples. Ooh, apple pie filling. It's like eating the best oh. apple pie you've ever eaten, but like with the most easiness ever. You talk about an easy shortcut dessert that's gonna wow. be a star. Mm -hmm. This will do it. This is so Now that I know those are cinnamon rolls, now I'm, I'm good. Wow. Okay, now for our Pumpkin cheesecake dip. I cannot wait for this too. Oh my goodness. Pumpkin cheesecake dip. O-M-G. Hmm. Whoa. Wow. For those of you who like to eat peanut butter on your apples, this is way better. This is next level. Yeah. If you want to, you can actually eat this with like vanilla wafers or graham crackers, whatever you want. I'm sure slathered on anything, it is amazing, but I do love the apples with it. This actually would be very good with a graham cracker mm -hmm. and the apple. Like if you have the apple, a little graham cracker and this, because mm -hmm. this is, you know, a little, little cheesy, a little pumpkin-y. That is good. Okay. All three recipes were so delicious. I cannot wait for you guys to try these and tell us what you think. If this is your first time here, we would love for you to join our family. So before you leave, be sure you hit that subscribe button. Y'all give this one a thumbs up and we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye y'all. Bye. <laughs> Monkey. Watch. You ready? These, these ones are okay, that one maybe.
maybe not so much. This one's for Daisy. Oh my god, fucking quit! <laughs>